Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on the Katahdin Zoo and Planet Zoo. My name is Shoes. We are bringing in the tapirs again. I still don't know how to f pronounce the first part of the name, so we're just gonna call them tapirs. If you recall, if you were here for long enough to recall anyhow, in our beta zoo we had the tapirs as our second animal for our entire zoo and they were such beautiful animals that we need to bring them back in one way or another so we're putting them in the north american side considering that they are part of central america and i believe also part of south america but i'm going off of memory right now that being said i do want to mention that this is going to be a short video you may have noticed when joining the video that being said we are going to actually make this North American area merge in with Central and South America also, just because it will work out better. Now, as for the habitat walkthrough, I do want to mention that this is going to be the main shelter building here. I don't really know what inspired me to make it like this, but I kind of thought this was the right way to go. And you'll see kind of the complete image here um, toward the end of the video, but it ends up being like a little weird barn thing. I don't really know what to consider it to be quite honest with you. Uh, but essentially it doesn't even complete the amount of space that they need for their habitat. So we end up having to make like two hard shelters and you'll see that come in. Uh, but you'll notice that I actually don't start off the habitat this time with the habitat barriers. And I did that mainly because I wanted to proceed this differently. I wanted to see how I could make the buildings that I imagine. I want to build those first and then bring in the barriers and kind of shape it for the little buildings that I make also. So we end up using a little bit of a wooden barrier and under the wiki it shows that our tapirs actually need like a three foot like barrier like three and a third foot barrier or something like that almost like four feet basically is what I'm getting at so they can't jump out but they don't look like animals that can jump to me so I'm actually kind of curious to how they get out uh, but anyway that's besides the fact so these guys are pretty cool they kind of go wherever they can uh, temperate wise tropical wise or I think even grassland wise if I recall correctly which I find kind of interesting but we go for more of a tropical feel in this habitat now, I do end up adding water to this. I actually almost forgot that they need water to actually, you know, live properly. Uh, so we end up giving them more of a swampy type feel for their habitat, which I think that brings, you know, kind of works out pretty well in this sense. And they require a lot of coverage. So I end up throwing in a lot of trees and it's a really densely built habitat when it comes to the foliage in it. Now, I do want to say for one thing that in our upcoming episode, on episode 12 or episode 13, we are going to start our new zoo. So I am pre-recording like crazy, so I still haven't decided whether or not I want like an Africa, Asia, or uh, what was it, Indian styles. So there's still a little bit of deciding to go on. But back to the tap here and our habitat. Another thing that we do here is we actually bring in water lilies for our water. So not only is there empty space like just in the pile of water like we do in other habitats, we actually add something in with it. Uh, so I mean like I think the grizzly bears had rocks and every other one doesn't really have anything except for trees lining the side of it. So this actually, we use the water in a different way which I think is pretty neat. We also do make this nice little canopy on the outer rim of our entrance to our habitat as in for you know services and i think it works out pretty well the whole idea was that we brought in this wall and we just needed to figure out how to make it look normal so we end up putting some roof pieces on it and it actually works out at the end uh, obviously putting up some columns so it doesn't look like a floating pile of wood as in for the roof uh, so we obviously take care of that issue now, this is a, basically a very small habitat. Another thing that we need to figure out too is, or I need to figure out, if you guys want to help me figure out, that would be perfectly fine as well. But we need something next to this habitat in between the habitat and the bridge. And I'm thinking of another exhibit area. Now, maybe some sort of like frogs, like a frog house or something like that. I'm not quite sure, but 
maybe put in an exhibit area because I don't know if a habitat would work out that well over there. So any suggestions, please let me know. I would greatly appreciate it. And like other habitats, we also did do a lot of editing on the outside of our habitat. And when I say a lot of editing, it's nothing major, but the little differences that we make again really bring out this habitat and really make this zoo someplace special. And I say this for every habitat, like, uh, and I notice I get really repetitive. So it's coming to the point where, you know, certain elements bring out certain habitats, but I'm reusing a lot of the elements in certain areas. So like uh, a lot of the like gardening that I do on the outside uh, is very consistent with other areas. So it's really just bring something special to our zoo at this point to where it's bringing a very consistent look, which is really good. You need something different for basically every habitat to make something, you know, more special over the other. As for this habitat, nothing too special, except for maybe the building there, which kind of, it looks interesting, but I'm not quite sure what to really do with it. I feel like it needs to be operational in some sense, but I haven't figured that one out. But we actually make this area look really nice. We It's not just a bunch of paths. It's like, we try to bring it out a little bit with our you know typical trim that we do manually. And I really like how it comes out. And this time I actually don't forget to put in our wonderful little dirt patches under our terrain modifications, like what I did with the tortoises, and forgot about that and had to go back and fix them. Now that being said, I did upload a thing to the Steam Workshop, that little information board that I talked about last video, uh, of what I did for the lemurs. If you guys want any sort of building along the zoo, that you want to see uploaded to the workshop I will leave a link under the next video that comes out and I will actually put like the build in the workshop so you guys can use it in your zoos I don't mind it um, I still haven't even figured out how to use like the habitat thing where you can uh, like upload your habitat to the workshop like with the terrain and all that so I haven't figured that out also I forgot too that the Timberwolves not many people have been coming by it and I realized why is because I only have one wolf and it's some like old male wolf that's just been sitting there for the longest time I honestly have no idea what happened to my other wolves at all they may have disappeared and it just didn't let me know that they died or something I end up replacing those wolves off camera after this episode and so hopefully that gets up and running again but I'm also dealing with a lot of stress for my animals with my buffaloes and my pronghorn antelope which I am still trying to figure out. I actually had to rebuild part of the bridge that went even just beside the habitat because of the cheetahs. They end up, people started using the bridge more often. I have no idea why. Uh, but essentially that's it to the habitat for the tapirs. Nothing really too special, something more plain and basic, but yet that coverage with you know the great foliage really gives it its unique culture. So uh, that's about it for this episode. If you'd like to give me a thumbs up to help support out the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Any comments, suggestions, let me know. Subscribe if you haven't already to keep up to date with all your planet Katahdin zoo needs or whatever the hell I was trying to say. And I'll see you guys in the next video.